Hi everyone, welcome to Pop Dust Presents. I'm Jordana, I'm here with the amazing fashion designer, genre bending icon, the one, the only Sophie Powers. <laughs> That Everyone. Was, that was quite the intro. We'll insert all the like claps. I don't know if I can level up to what you just Oh, you're said. already leveling up. Um, Thank you. How's it going? How are you feeling today? I'm feeling good, feeling fresh, feeling like a whatever you just said I was. Yeah, well, you know, feel it because you are it. Um, Thank you so much. First of all, you just released this label debut single, Nosebleed, with Atlantic Records and Tag Music. Um, super exciting, I'm obsessed with it. How are you feeling? Um, I'm feeling really great. The release has been so cool, especially considering um, I'm filming a music video for it this Friday. Oh my god! Yeah, and Can you like tell us anything about it? Okay, well, I learned the choreography yesterday for it. <gasps> There's choreo? Yep, it's gonna okay. be a bit of a more K-pop moment with dance, a whole dance scene, but it's um, oh gonna embody this sort of country club aesthetic, and Ooh. I'm so, so excited to film it. And the release has been great, you know? Everybody seems to like it. Um, it wasn't a letdown, because people on my TikTok were like, I hope the actual song is as good as the teaser. So oh I'm my like, God. Huh. <laughs> No pressure, right? <laughs> yeah, no, but I, I think yeah. everyone's liked it so far. That's amazing. Yeah. Did you design any of the, the costumes? Because I just want to take a moment to be like, <laughs> you're not just a musician. Like, um, so cool. You are from Toronto, right? Yeah, I'm from Toronto, Canada. Yeah, and when you were 16, you told your parents you wanted to be a musician. Yeah, actually when I was 15, 15 was when I started online for music and acting. Oh, amazing. And then moved out to LA when I turned 16. Oh, amazing. How'd so, your yeah. parents take that? <laughs> um, They were actually pretty supportive. Oh, I mean, amazing. I think they were both a bit shaken and thought it would be a little bit of a phase. Yeah. Um, In my lyrics of Nosebleed, it was like just another phase. Cause mm. like so many people would tell me like, oh, it's just a phase, like this whole, my best friends at the time, when I told them I wanted to do music, they said, okay, so like once you're done with your music phase and you come back to Toronto, um, oh my are you God. gonna like go out and party with us again? And I'm like, oh, it's not a phase. Whoa. And I think my parents knew that somewhat. Mm -hmm. Deep down, they probably were hoping it was just a little bit of a phase, but you know, I've been making music. I've been a theater yeah. kid. I've been doing this since I was so little. That's and amazing. even the fashion designing stuff I've been doing yeah. since I was eight. I designed the outfits for Nosebleed for the oh video. My gosh. Um, Jordan, um, one of my on my management team, uh, she <laughs> has been so instrumental in helping to style the extras mm -hmm. or the girls that I'm going to be dancing with. Oh my, my god! My friends in the video, and then I designed my own outfit for it. I have two outfits I designed for it. So yeah, I'm that excited. is so exciting! I can't wait to see it. Okay, so you're casting your friends. Have you always? kind of just visualized a life where you're just like making music, getting to make your own costumes, getting to cast your friends and your stuff. And now you have this whole team. Like, how's it kind of feel <laughs> living your dream? Like, well, it, this just feels like the beginning. And that yeah. sounds so crazy. But if you think about it, I just signed with Atlantic. And yeah. this is only my first single. I'm working on an album right now. Oh I, my gosh. You know, like every other artist, I want to sell out Madison Madison Square Garden eventually. And oh, for sure. I'm launching. You're on track. I'm launching a clothing brand this year. Um, in oh 2023, that's in the works. Probably won't be till like the very end of the year or early 2024, but hopefully 2023. <laughs> I'm underachiever. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I am very hard on myself though, and I just oh see gosh. so much happening. I I get too ahead of myself, honestly, yeah. and then that makes me sound like a diva because I'm like. I see myself doing this and this, and people are like, whoa, slow down. <laughs> but you are, and that's like manifesting, right? You're yeah. like, I'm already doing it. No, seriously. I was even chatting about this earlier today. Like, I said to myself, like, even before I came out to LA, like, I'll be in LA in two years. And I was looking at my Snapchat memories, and I see, like, I'll be in LA in two years. And it's like, I live here now, wow. which is, I'm so lucky to be able to do, because, you know, for music stuff especially, it's, yeah. it's great out here. Yeah, totally. Um, but yeah. And you're on <laughs> tour right now, right? So I just got back from tour with Carly Hansen, shout out Carly Hansen, awesome, Amazing. and Senses, the band, were on that tour. But yeah, I was the support for Carly, and that ended at the Echo 
two the night oh, before yesterday and now i'm going on tour with water parks in june oh my god which is so surreal so exciting i'm so excited because water parks is a band like i've always looked up to since middle school i listened to no them way. and now i'm opening for such them. a full circle moment are you having these pinch me moments like all the time yeah, yeah. i mean even right now i like I'm at an I'm in an interview at Atlantic Records, mm-hmm. like the bill. I don't know. I sound like a loser, but it really no. is so surreal. What are some of your inspirations, especially behind Nosebleed? Because I honestly like couldn't even pinpoint um, comps that seemed like, which is so cool. Well, first of all, thank you. Yeah. Uh, you could be like my personal hype woman. Um, any day. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, Nosebleed though. It's interesting you say there are no like comps because. I don't really know what to tell people still to this day when they yeah. ask me, what kind of music do you make? I'm like, uh, I don't know, maybe listen it's to like it. It's <laughs> like hyper pop and there's some pop punk and pop and alternative pop in there. But I just want to make music at the end of the day that, you know, reflects your emotions mm-hmm. and I want people to feel validated when they listen to my songs, whether it's yeah. a super angry song or a super empowering song or like a really sad song Whatever that emotion is, I want you to feel that to that extreme Mm -hmm. when you're listening. Um, Which is, I think, why Nosebleed is pretty interesting because it's this emotional... You know, nobody really talks about the actual emotional aspect of just feeling drained and seeing everything Mm -hmm. but feeling nothing. Mm -hmm. And I keep saying... I keep reiterating that about Nosebleed because it's kind of just like this mentality of, like, it is what it is, like... But at the same time, not it is what it is. Oh my gosh, this is happening and this is happening. It's like having anxiety, but trying to shut that anxiety off so you're just in zombie land. Oh my God, And for me, having to do that constantly, I'm sure a bunch of other people have to do that constantly. Thank God I'm on medication now for Mm -hmm. anxiety. But but, you know, it's... um, The trauma response is real. It's very taxing. What? Because you mentioned you just want to make music that just resonates with people and that makes people feel to this really intense degree what's um a song or an artist that when you were growing up like really made you have a revelation or catharsis or like kind of healed you through a moment like is there anything in specific it could even be like silly honestly we were talking about hannah montana earlier (laughs) hannah montana was my like literal life Mm -hmm. um i would also say Nirvana has mm. helped me so much. I released a Nirvana cover of Heart Shaped Box as a tribute to, like, literally so to Kurt. Cool. Um, and not only Nirvana, but Lady Gaga and artists that were playing on the radio mm. when I w- I'm a 2004 kid. So, yeah. you know, grew up with that electronic Kesha, Avril Lavigne, yeah. Lady Gaga, all those powerful female artists mm-hmm. i was just so drawn to that from such a young age again hannah montana <laughs> and she's having another moment no <laughs> literally and i think um that i because of the fact that i grew up in the 2000s where like that avant-garde pop star like Katy perry lady gaga and Nicki minaj all of them were doing the most mm-hmm. and now like i feel like that's where like i want to set myself to those limits right. and that's why i'm like if i can't find the extravagant outfit that I want I'll design it myself if mm-hmm. I can't um make the song that like I'm you know hearing on the radio I'll figure out a way to make a song that's better than what I'm hearing on the radio mm-hmm. and that sounds so bad because radio songs are obviously great to be playing on the radio but, yeah but you know it's just setting those expectations of yourself but you know being thankful of mm-hmm. those who allowed you to set those expectations and made that path for you. And for me personally, yeah. all of those artists really have made my path. That's amazing. And just having that mentality of, I mean, as women being told kind of our whole lives, like you can either do this or you can't, like having to wait for someone to green light I or roll. having to wait for her permission. Yeah, gag, eye roll. Eye roll. So yes. I agree though. Mm-hmm. Here I totally for agree. that mentality of like, no, I'm gonna do this. And that goes hand in hand with the manifestation of like, all right, I'm moving in that direction. Let, let's let let the world show me that I'm moving in the right direction because I know I am. And not waiting for anyone's permission and creating your own fashion line. And 
also creating your own content too on TikTok and stuff. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I kind of wanted to transition to that because I thought it was interesting um, when you mentioned all of people's expectations kind of on TikTok. How has that mm -hmm. kind of been? Because I know that you've um, found a lot of success organically too of just people resonating with you and your brand and your music. And how has that kind of been to both be grateful for and be like, oh, great, an audience and kind of monitor those expectations and not let yourself be too pulled by doing this for other people or to please other people or set yourself up for, for that? That's a good question. I actually, um, obviously content burnout is a real thing and I'm mm -hmm. not a content creator i'm an artist so yeah it's i have but i have to put myself in that content creator mindset right where you think what would i want to see if i was someone consuming this if i was just scrolling on tiktok what would like catch my eyes like if i was a youtuber right right and i think that is what makes it fun because it's like i get my own tv show or my mm. own youtube channel where i can be a creator and um you know what do i like or what are people liking most about my show or my channel? Mm -hmm. And then I can reincorporate that more. And if something doesn't do well, then obviously, okay, I won't repost that. But you gotta take it with a grain of salt. Like right. if something does do well, maybe I'll continue on that path. If it doesn't do well, but I think it could do well, maybe I'll try again and push it. It's just like throwing stuff on the wall and seeing yeah. what sticks. But yeah. the expectations for me, um, Luckily, I'm not in the position right now where I have like millions and millions of people who are depending on me. Right. Um, but when that time comes, ask me this question again. I'm yeah. Kidding. I'm kidding. No, um, right now though, for me, I just want people to be able to vibe out to my music. Mm -hmm. And if they can't do that, then I'm doing something wrong. The TikTok stuff and the content will all come as long mm -hmm. as the music is there and it sounds good. Yeah. At least that's what I keep telling myself. That's <laughs> amazing. Yeah, the music leads and remembering that and remembering why you're doing what you're doing. Exactly. Yeah. That's and like, amazing. I want people to resonate with my music, mm -hmm. but I also don't want to come across as superficial yeah. and in inauthentic mm -hmm. just for the sake of like a follower right um or someone who will you know interact right so there's a fine line but totally i think i'm figuring it out yeah totally and i think leading with and coming back to that intention of oh i want to help people i want to make people feel i want to do what so many amazing female artists have done for me and i think yeah as long as you're you're totally leading with that so i feel like anything else that anyone else would project on it is just their own projection so yeah i, I mean I, even in moments like this like i just got i just you remind me like of why i'm even doing this yeah it's because of you know being able to lean on music so much when i was younger mm. i want anyone to be able to lean on my music in that way and help them mentally physically spiritually whatever because art is art is crazy it's life changing yeah um, yeah Oh, I sound like such a guru. Oh, it's just life changing. <laughs> but you know, that's no, how I real. feel. Outside of music, what are some of your favorite things? Like, let's say you have a full day off and right. you're like, I'm not going to let myself do anything productive. Like, what are what would be on your list of like well, anything you could do? First of all, I'd probably, if I had a day off, I'd figure out some way to make music or make art because <laughs> I'd go crazy without it. For but sure. when I'm just, you know, done um, or, like, a little bit tapped out, I watch way too much anime. Oh, amazing. Um, I, I like gaming. Yeah. I, I used to play a lot of sports, and I actually do really enjoy working out. Um, not to be, like, one of those gym girls because I'm, I'm, like, a twig. <laughs> but I try. To gym rat. I used to be an athlete. But, yeah, um, <laughs> you know, in terms of working out, um, just jogging for like mm -hmm. 30 minutes a day or going for a walk 30 minutes a day is great, so peaceful. Yeah. Or I'll just find myself designing and, you know, chatting with my friends back home because a lot of them are in university and it's so foreign to me right now. Whoa. I'm like, wait, so like, what's the tea at the frat oh party? Oh my God, there's and so much tea, I bet. I know, and then they <laughs> tell me like, oh my God, like um, we were playing Pong and then this happened and like, I'm like, I'm over here at, you know, uh, in a record label. And it's just so cool because we get to yeah. exchange that, you know? 
And, oh, that's um, amazing. I'll do a lot of stuff with my family, too, because I have triplet younger siblings. No so, way. Yeah, so, like, they'll bother me or I'll annoy them. And, you oh know, I live gosh. with two of them here. My other one's in Toronto. But my mom's oh. out here with me now with two of them. And then my dad and my other brother in Toronto. And we all, we're, we're all close. Well, yeah. being a sibling of triplets, like, how was that? Was it... Um, I think I definitely gained a lot of independence from it, yeah. having to do so much for myself at a young age, but I also gained a, like, these are my minions mentality. <laughs> yeah. So, like, when we were growing up, I would just be, like, I would, like, tell him, like, Charlie, if you don't give me a cup of water, like, you're gonna get <laughs> cursed. And, like... <laughs> And like I was so mean to them, but now we're now we're fine. <laughs> now they just get you a cup of water because they're conditioned. You know. <laughs> well, okay, that's now I sound like a literal no, dictator. I'm, I'm not. I'm no. very close with them. Me and my sister Piper, like they came and did Piper and Charlie did the merch at the show two nights ago. Oh, that's and they, awesome. So they, they like it. They like helping out. Yeah, yeah it's fun. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm like I'm like trying to save Grace. I'm like, Mom, I love them so much. <laughs> If my mom sees this. Well, thank you so much for meeting with me and just chatting. So excited to see where you go. And with thank the release you. of Nosebleed and this album that you're working on and this tour, just can't wait. Everyone, check out Sophie and follow her journey. And check us out next time. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. It's Sophie Powers and everything. Self-promo's <laughs> done. All right, thank you. <laughs>